Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at the following trick for calculating the matrix exponential. So we have these two theorems, which I'll present without proof. The proofs aren't too bad, but uh, really we wanna just get to the meat of it, which is computing the matrix exponential in the cases when they're non-diagonalizable, and maybe you've got a larger matrix, and you haven't been exposed to something like the Jordan canonical form. And even if you have, this is like sometimes a bit easier than going through the process of calculating that Jordan canonical form. Okay, so now uh, let's see what we've got here, if A is an n by n matrix, then we can write e to the ta as this descending sum. So alpha n minus 1, t to the n minus 1, a to the t n minus 1, all the way down to alpha naught times the identity matrix. And the important thing here is that these alpha i's are functions of t, so they're not numbers. And then uh, if lambda is an eigenvalue of ta, and it's important that it's an eigenvalue of ta, um, and it's of multiplicity k, then e to the lambda is uh, equal to this following thing. So we have the derivative with respect to lambda, the jth derivative of this polynomial we'll call r theta. So it's kind of the same thing as what we have up here, except we've plugged in uh, lambda for t and the a's are gone. And so alpha sub n minus 1, lambda to the n minus 1, all the way down to alpha naught. And so that's equal to this e to the lambda. And that's true for all derivatives j from 0, so the original polynomial, up to k minus 1. Okay, so in this video we want to look at this following example. So we have this matrix, uh, 3 by 3 matrix, so it's 3, 1, minus 1, minus 6, 8, minus 2, minus 5, 3, 3. And we're going to skip some of the steps involving just like normal routine calculations. But that being said, we're going to do everything that's kind of new outlined by these theorems. So maybe the first thing to do would be to calculate the eigenvalues. And you can do that by looking at the characteristic polynomial. So let's just recall that's the determinant of xi minus uh, this matrix A. We set that equal to 0. We get that the eigenvalues of A, which I'll call lambda hat, are um, 4, 4 and 6. So we've got 1 of multiplicity 2, it's 4, and then we have 1 of multiplicity 1 and it's 6. And I'll just like um, give you the information, this is non-diagonalizable. So that means uh, this thing has algebraic multiplicity 2, but only geometric multiplicity 1. And this multiplicity over here is talking about just the algebraic multiplicity. Okay, so now uh, what we want to say is maybe we'll say um, lambda equals 4t, uh, 4t, or 6t, and this is as an eigenvalue of ta. So the eigenvalues of a and ta are related in that way. Okay, now the next thing that we want to do is notice that this theorem up here says that we can write the matrix exponential e to the ta as um, alpha naught times the identity, alpha 1 t times a, and then alpha 2 uh, t squared times a squared. So uh, that means we only have a quite short sum in order to find the matrix exponential of this thing. So we have alpha 2 t squared times a squared plus alpha 1 t a plus alpha naught times the identity matrix. Okay, so I'll write that out, um, but uh, I won't calculate the matrix A squared in depth or anything like that. I'll just jump to the um, <clears throat> final version of this matrix uh, because it's really just like a bunch of arithmetic. So let's do that. Okay, so now we're done calculating this matrix. So notice uh, I've arranged it where these red lines delimit the rows and the columns just so that not everything's mixed up. So notice up here we've got alpha naught plus three alpha one t plus eight alpha two t squared, and then so on and so forth. We have alpha one t plus eight alpha two t squared uh, right there. We've got, well anyway, you can see what we have. I'll let you guys copy that down if you're working uh, um, together with this. I'll give you guys a few seconds to do that and then we'll clean up the board and get to the next step. Okay, so now we're ready to do the part where we uh, apply this theorem. So we know we've got uh, 
eigenvalue of multiplicity two, that's four t, and one that's multiplicity of one, which is six t. So let's do first the eigenvalue of multiplicity uh, one, which is six t, but before we do that, we need to look in this case, our polynomial r lambda is alpha two um, lambda squared plus alpha one lambda plus um, alpha naught. So if we have lambda equals six t, so that means we have e to the 6t is r of 6t. So e to the 6t is equal to r of 6t. But now notice that is 36 alpha 2 plus 6 alpha 1 plus alpha naught. And that's the only equation we get from this because this is multiplicity 1. So now let's go on to lambda equals 4t. So here we'll get e to the 4t equals r of 4t. So that's going to give us 16 alpha 2 plus 4 alpha 1 plus alpha naught. Okay? And then also we have one for the derivative of r lambda. So that means we also have an equation e to the 4 t equals the derivative of r with respect to lambda evaluated at lambda equals 4t. So that's how I'll notate this over here. So notice in this case uh, we'll get 8 alpha 2 plus 4 alpha 1. Great. So what this gives us is some system of equations which we want to solve for alpha naught, alpha 1, and alpha 2. And so this should be fairly easy. It's an elementary problem in linear algebra to solve the system of equations for alpha naught, alpha 1, and alpha 2. So again, I'll skip that, but I will say what you'll do is take those solutions for alpha 1, alpha uh, 2, and alpha 0 and plug them into this big matrix that we had at the end, which represented um, e to the ta in terms of that alpha 1, alpha uh, two and alpha naught. So what I'll do is I'll just skip to that being on the board. Okay, so I've skipped to having our final answer. So let's recall we had a general form for e to the ta that we grabbed from this theorem. That was on the board a while ago. It like was pretty lengthy in terms of the number of uh, terms in each entry of e to the ta. And then we were able to set up an equation to solve for alpha naught, alpha one, and alpha two using this theorem. We set up that equation. We didn't solve it, although it'd be fairly elementary to solve. But once you do solve it and plug that into the original expression that we had for e to the ta and simplify everything, this is what you get. So I won't read off all of these because they're all just like functions of t. Um, and I'll let you just look at them and write them down, but um, <clears throat> this is a nice, simple way of calculating the matrix exponential. It requires a little bit of work, but it doesn't require you to diagonalize or find the Jordan canonical form. Okay, that's the end of this video.